Good morning. Today is October 25th. Wow. This month is almost over. Um, today we are going to continue with the deduction of the of the stiffness matrix of the beam element. It's similar to the bar, uh, the stiffness element for the bar. But since we, I tried to explain you or convince you in, in one of the last sessions, since this is a fourth order problem, okay, we need to have not only displacements as degrees of freedom, but also um, rotations. And that will be, in general, what we are going to see in the, in the next. Uh, what will you see? What you will see in in the applications when you use uh, computer programs? Okay, we consider in every joint, in every node, to be able to displace in the three directions. In general, we have a three D problem, so this joint can move in the x, y, and z directions and also can rotate in the three directions. So in general, in every degree of, in every joint, we have six degrees of freedom. Okay, that's the general case, okay? Right now, we are working only with uh, displacement and rotation because we considered at the beginning that the elements are aligned. Then we're going to put this beam in a plane and we're going to have three degrees of freedom because that's a plane. But when you go to the general 3D, then you will have that every point, can, can every joint can move in the three directions and can rotate in the three directions. So we will have six degrees of freedom, okay? So if you have a thousand joints, you will have 6,000 degrees of freedom. So your big K matrix will be that big. And remember that uh, the number of operations that you have to develop in order to solve a system of equations, it's uh, equal or it's uh, proportional to the number of equations raised to the third power. So it's, it's a lot of operations, okay? so. That's what uh, we, we have to be careful with the, the discretization, okay? Because it, it, I mean, it's so easy when you go to ANSYS, okay? Reduce the size of the elements. Yes, but the problem is that the number of joints increases and the number of operations that you need to develop to solve the system, it's uh, approximated by the order of the, the system raised to the third power. So it's a lot of operations. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, let me share the screen. Um, what it is here. Okay. Uh, people, can you confirm me that you can see my projection? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, so here, this is what we saw last, uh, last, last, um, Thursday. Uh, we said that we're going to consider, this is a, a, an element, beam element in the local reference system and we are going to consider two degrees of freedom, vertical displacement and rotation, vertical displacement and rotation. And we said that uh, since we have four conditions, the interpolation now is going to be order three. Okay, so this is the general expression, okay? Constant, et cetera. Uh, and then we start, if we apply this or evaluate this polynomial in this point, we have to recuperate this value. So we have to say that A0 has to be equal to D1Y. We differentiate that and we can evaluate the derivative in, in this point, in zero, 
you have to recuperate this slope. That's that. So we have evaluated already two, uh, two coefficients. Then we go evaluate the displacement and the rotation in this point. That's the position L, right? And uh, we have to recuperate the value of the displacement on this end. And the derivative has to be equal to the slope, which is the, the, the second degree of freedom of the second joint. So here, we have two more equations for A2 and A3, okay? And as you can see, uh, A2 and A3 will depend on this, 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 and that, okay? Uh, this is what we did next in the next uh, stage. See, here we have all of this uh, expression for the two uh, coefficients. And then we go back and replace. Okay, we say that this, this is A zero, this is A one, this is A two, and I'm not going to good, but this is A three. There, and you can see immediately that there are uh, terms which are multiplied by D1. So let me use a different color. Let me, let's see, let's see, let me see, and green. Here I have D1. Here I have D1. Now here I have D1. So what I'm going to do is express, see this is similar to what we did last uh, session, okay? So this is a row multiplied by a vector, and the result is an scalar. So here in this uh, term, we're gonna have the combination of this. Uh, here it is the other one, and here is the other one. This is multiplied already by D1Y. So uh, if you take that out, we're gonna have a one here. So it's gonna be one, minus three over L squared times X squared. And here plus two divided by L cubed uh, and times X to the third. Okay, so that's gonna be here. Here, we're gonna have all the terms which are multiplied by phi one Z. Here it is one, so this is going to be, we're gonna have here an X, uh, this, multiplied by x squared, uh, this multiplied by x cubed, etc. So we're going to do that in the next slide. So today is, uh, let me, is uh, October 25. Okay, so, um, uh, Replacing the coefficients and rearranging, re uh, in the following way. Okay, we have that. The displacement, remember, this is an approximation. This is for a single element, and this is expressed in the local reference system. It's going to be a product of this row times D1Y, C1Z, all of these are local, D2Y, and C2Z. All of these are local displacement and rotations. And here, there. For example, would you please tell me what terms are we going to have here? Anybody? Anybody, please, here. Uh, 
Mr. Bayas, are you there, Mr. Bayas? What are yes, the terms? Of, what are the terms that we have here, Mr. Bayas? Here, from your class notes. See everything which is multiplied by d one y. What do we have here, please? Uh, a zero. Yeah, but what is a zero right now? I need. See, right now we have found what a zero is. What is a zero? A zero here. A zero is d one y. Yes. So I need to have this term in this one. expression. Exactly, it's one. It's one because I have that already here. So yes. So I have one here. What else? <clears throat> what else? Let me go back uh, here. I have it here, right? So it's going to be minus three of L, L squared times X squared. So it's going to be this is going to be minus three over L squared times X squared. And we need a cubic term. Mr. Rogers, tell me the cubic term. Yes. Um, uh, two over L square. Two over L square. Uh, cube. Cube. Okay. L cube. And multiply by what? Um, X, Q, X cube. And this is positive, I think. Yes. So all of this is what we're going to call n1 of x. So it's a cubic polynomial, which is completely, completely definite. See, what we're doing is discretization. We're having four unknowns, and everything which is in here is known. Uh, for the second one, uh, this is going to be uh, x. I'm going to. I'm not going to uh, put the the hat here to save some time. Okay, uh, x minus two x squared over l. And the last term is uh, plus x cubed. So x, let me check my notes here, x minus 2 x squared over l and plus x cubed. We go on, the next term is going to be uh, everything which is multiplied by D2Y okay. is going to be three X squared over L and minus two X cubed uh, divided by, now this is a square. L cubed. And finally, the last term is going to be uh, minus one over X squared over L squared and plus X cubed over L squared. No, this is this is not there. This is not x squared. This is just uh, x. Yeah. Doctor. Yeah. In the second term, in the plus uh, x cube, 
you don't put the over L code. Oh, it, it, the problem is that for some reason, some, some terms erased out. Oh. So this is N2, N3, and N4. And you see here, for example, this term here is non-dimensional. This is L cubed. Doctor. <clears throat> yes. Um, in the term minus x over L uh, is. You x tell me, n one, n one, two, three, or four? Uh, one, two, three, four. And the fourth here? Uh -huh. The, the okay. first, x squared over L or, or not? Unfortunately, for some reason, I got lost. There. Hope. <laughs> He doesn't like it. Jesus. Thanks. You see, people, that uh, this term here, N1 and N3, are non-dimensional. So you multiply this by D1 or D2, which are length, the result is length. On the contrary, this term here, and this term here, the results are at linear dimensions. And this is non-dimensional. So the result is going to be linear. So the product will produce four terms with units of displacement. When just, that's what we are calculating here. So this is something we always, always have to be careful. OK, people? Please, please, this is just an approximation, OK? So if for any reason, the displacement in every, in, a, in one element, okay, according to the load, which is applied to it, does not correspond to the cubic is, uh, polynomial, then you have an error. Because we're assuming that the, the displacement follows this approximation, okay? This is something that we mentioned in the previous chapter. So it's similar here. So this is a very good method. Finite element is a very good method, very applicable, flexible, whatever you want. But it's just an approximation. OK, and that depends on the type of load that you have, especially. OK, now let's go on and try to de derive the stiffness equation for the uh, beam element. OK, so let's go next. So uh, we say. To derive uh, okay, let's remember um, expressions for shear force and bending moment. Okay, so the shear force in general is going to be minus uh, EI. Okay, so this is the displacement differentiated one, two, three times. Okay, so we're going to have is uh, minus EI. And then for this part here, okay, we have already an approximation. So let's go back. Let's go back one, two. Here. What's the third derivative of this? Somebody. The third derivative of this. Mr. Ortega, will you please tell me what's the third derivative of this? Uh, yeah, just give me a second. Uh, <laughs> Come on. Two over L. Uh, so I'm sorry, I, I we missed uh, here one, one little term. This is acute. So you differentiate once and you 
this disappears. If you differentiate three times, this disappears. Yeah. If you differentiate three times, you get three, two, and then uh, x to the zero. Three, two, that's six, and two, that's 12. So it's going to be 12 divided by L cubed. So we're going to have here, we're going to have there. The next term is going to be 6 divided by L squared. Let me go by. Let me go back just this one here. And this, this, this two disappears. And this one here gets a 6x over L squared. I'm sorry, 6, because you differentiate three times. 6 over L squared. That's what you have here. The next one is minus 12. You can check it at home. Or you are at home. So we're going minus, minus 12 over L cubed. And the last one is six or L square. And this is multiplied by, I'm going to put it like this because I want to save some space. Okay? So there's something interesting, right? Because in this case, you see that because of the approximation, the shear force in this element between joint one and two is constant. Okay, so every time you have a load which produces a, a shear force which is not constant between these two points, you have an error. And that's uh, the case when you have distributed load. We will see that in a minute. Okay, similarly, the, the bending moment is equal to EI V and we have to differentiate twice. Okay, again, we're going to have EI. And I'm going to give you the expression. So we, you see here that I have, I could take L cubed outside, and this is the way we usually do. Okay, so I got L cubed, and this term, this and that, are multiplied by L in the numerator. So that's easier. In this case, I'm going to give you this expression already taking L cubed as a, as a common term, okay? So we need more space here. So it's going to be 12x minus 6L. The other is 6XL minus 4L squared minus 12x plus 6L, 6XL minus 2L squared. This is multiplied by the displacement. Okay, so you see here that uh, shear force is constant and bending moment varies linearly. So, uh, we can write that, what is, we can see that as a consequence, of our approximation, V is constant and the bending moment is uh, a linear distribution in the element. Okay, so that's why we all were always uh, worried about convergence. Okay? 
Now, we're getting close. Okay? Remember, when we analyzed a bar element, what we did was we, we said that since we are discretizing, we are only interested in two points, in the two joints. And we set up the equilibrium of these two points. We're going to do the same thing. But in this case, since this is a fourth order problem, we have to be worried about equilibrium of forces and equilibrium of moment, but only for the two joints of the element. Okay. I said since we are discretizing the problem, we consider equilibrium of the two joints only. Remember, when we did this in a continuous way in solid mechanics and shift structure, we said a differential equation. And that differential equation represented the equilibrium of any arbitrary differential element. So we basically solve continuously for any point, for any element. Differential element, the equilibrium. In this case, we're going to have to consider only two discrete. Okay, now let's go on. So we have this is the element. This is joint one. This is joint two. This is a local direction. This is the local direction. Okay, so here I'm going to use this color. This is the external force. This is F1, Y. And this is the external moment. These are external that we apply in the joint. What happens in here? No, we don't consider that. Why not? Because this is a discrete analysis. Same thing on the other, on the other joint we consider that we have an external force, an external moment. Okay, these are external. Now, they have to be in equilibrium with what? With the internal shear force and bending moment. So we make a cut here, this cut, is very close to the end when we have the joint. And similarly, we have a cut here, very close to the joint on the right end. Uh, the length, I don't have much space, but you can imagine that the length is L. So this is the equilibrium. This is the cut. And here, this is a positive phase. Remember that we are following the assumption, the sign, or the sign convention that we employed in uh, solid mechanics, okay? So that means that this is the right phase. So this is the positive shear force, and this is the, the shear force on the x equals zero because we are very close to the joint. Similarly, the bending moment is going to be that a zero. So these are the internal forces on this positive phase. And here I have these two, which are the external. So this is F1, Y, and this is M1, Y, M and C. Again, equilibrium of the, the other joint. Okay, here I have F to Y and rotation M to Z. But now this is a negative phase. So the signs are, or the directions are opposite to this one. So we have, this is going to be V and L. 
And this is going to be the bending moment at L. Okay, so in order to have equilibrium of, the, of this joint, see this force here points upward, plus this force here points upward, the two combining has to be zero. Similarly, for the, for the bending moment, you see that M0 plus M1Y, this is external, the two added has to be zero. On the other side here, on the right uh, end, the positive force points upward, this is external, points upward, minus the shear force at L has to be zero. Similarly, for the bending moment, the bend, the, this is external moment, points in this direction, minus the, the internal moment, they have to cancel. And this is what we're going to do. Questions, people, so far? Let me save, okay. Okay, now, so here, I'm going to say F1Y plus V at zero has to be zero. So we say for equilibrium, this is joint one, we say F1Y plus V at zero has to be zero. So F1Y has to be equal to V at zero. Let me go back here. We say that the shear force is constant, right? So what we need to do is simply put this down here. So uh, this is going to be equal to minus minus V at zero. So it's going to be minus EI over L cubed. And then what we're going to do is we can include, let me go back. Okay, we're going to include this term. Then this negative, which is because of the definition, has already canceled. So we have 12, six minus 12, six. So we're going to have here, uh, 12, 6, minus 12, 6. So this is the first equation that we need to satisfy to have equilibrium. The second one, uh, let me go back and we see that here, I have this opposite counterclockwise in this moment, uh, this is the internal moment, also counterclockwise. So we have to say that the external is M1Z plus the internal has to be zero. So the external has to be equal to minus the bending moment at zero. So it's EI over L cubed. Let me go back. Let me go back. Here we have the expressions, okay, for the bending moment. So uh, we have to evaluate this at zero. So this term here, this, this, and that disappear. So we have minus six, minus four L squared, six L minus two L squared. So we're going to have so we're gonna have the six L four L square minus six L two L square. And multiply by 
जी लेट्स गो नाउ टू द अदर जॉइंट इन द अदर जॉइंट या या आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन या गो ऑन फोर्स फोर्स वन वाइ इट्स नॉट हैव टू बी पॉजिटिव बिकॉज़ द शेयर फोर्स हैव नेगेटिव आर वेरी नो 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 See the, the thing. The thing is this: when you do not know something, what do we have to do? We assume it as positive, oh, I got it. and then the algebra will take care of the signs. So this is a positive phase. In a positive phase, we put we do not know how much the shear force are going to be, so we have to assume it as in the positive direction. Similar to this case, this is a negative phase. In the negative phase, these are the positive shear force and bending moment. So if you have this force here and this force here, and the two have to cancel. That means that one has to be equal to the other, but with negative sign. That's that's all. I got you. Thank you. No problem. Okay, now. Let's go to the other end. Okay, so the other end here, see F two has to be equal to uh, v y v of L, right? So we say F two y. Has to be equal to v at l, and uh, that means that this is equal to e i for l cubed. Then we have minus twelve, minus six l, twelve, minus six l. Multiply by the four elements, and finally, uh, the moments. See, you see, this one here is counterclockwise, and this here is clockwise. So this has to be equal to that one. But now this is the bending moment. We have to evaluate it at L. Remember that this is a linear variation, so we have to evaluate it at L. So it's going to be twelve L. Minus six l, six l squared minus four l squared, etc. So we say um, m to z is equal to m at l is equal to e i over l cubed, and this is going to be six l. 2l square minus 6l 4l square so we have to satisfy these four equations in order to have equilibrium of forces on the left and for and forces and moments on the left and on the right end of this element okay So let's put the whole thing together. So we said that uh, the F one, M one, F two, M two. Remember, these are external forces. External moments applied on the right and on the end, on the right and left and the right end. And here I have everybody has e i over l cubed, and this is multiplied by d one y, d one z, d two y, and d two z. See this. This vector is unknown. This matrix here is not. Why? Because we assume, we assume 
what we expect to happen in between this element. It's an assumption. So here, what we need to do is we have to put all of this into here. For example, the last equation is going to be this one. So this is going to be 6L, 2L squared, minus 6L, 4L squared. Here I have minus 12, minus 6L, 12 minus 6L. And over here I have 6L, 4L squared, minus 6L, and 2L squared. Up here it's going to be 12, 6L, minus 12, and 6L. And this, what we have here, is the stiffest matrix of a mean element in the local reference system. This is what we're looking for. So as you can see, we had a beam, but right now we have only four unknowns. We don't have to solve the differential equation. That's what we have to solve. It's a algebraic equations with four unknowns. Four is a discrete number, discrete number. Remember, differential equation, that's a continuous problem. Four unknowns, discrete problem. Continuous, discrete. Okay? Of course, solving a discrete, it's easier in general. But the problem is that we have to have in mind that this is an approximation. Because what happens in between, we assume. We assume. In some cases, that assumption is correct. But in some others, it's not. That means that we are including an, an error. And we have to be worried about that difference. Okay? Um, there is no question. Is there any question, people, so far? Okay, what we're doing is the, what we call the direct method. Okay? Uh, this direct method, it's applicable in these cases when we have, in general, linear, uh, simple situations. Okay? When we go on, for example, for plates, it's very difficult, very, very difficult. Uh, so in those cases, what we do is we rely on the energy methods, and we will see that in next chapter. Okay, but so far, let's, let's, let's go on. Okay, let's do an example. Let's suppose I'll have a beam like this. Anything strange for you people? Anything strange? Anybody? Mr. Peralta, is there anything strange in this example? Uh, good morning, doctor. Uh, no, I see, I didn't Come see on. anything. No, there's, there's something strange here. Mr. Guerrero, do you see any strange here in this example? Good morning, doctor. Uh, uh, there are no second support. Exactly. Exactly. So this will tend to rotate indefinitely. Uh, and what happens in this case is that uh, uh, let's use one element. Okay, so we say on the left, so we have F1, Y, let me avoid using this so uh, I can save some 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 ink. Thank you. So uh, this is M one Z F. How much is F F two Y F two Y people is F two Y. Minus F, be careful. Minus F, yes. So we know that value. 
That's, that's something which is interesting. And M2, M2Z, M2Z, anybody? Zero. Exactly, zero. zero. There's no moment here. So we have one and two, and that's it. So here, I'm not going to write the whole thing because it takes a lot of time. And here, how much is D1, D1Y? Zero. Zero, right. How much is phi one Z? Phi one, no, no, this is not clamp it. It's just simply supported. That's our problem. So this is phi one Z. On the right-hand side, we do not know D to Y and phi to Z, we do not know that. There. So that's the that's question that we, the system of equations we will try to solve. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but you can try, okay? And uh, as uh, Mr. Guerrero uh, recognized, this, this is not enough. Uh, I'm just going to write it here since there is not, because why I'm writing this? Because this is something that happens very often when we go on to uh, finite elements using a, a, a program, that we forget that we're working with in a 3D problem in general. And we have to uh, avoid what we call a rigid body motions. That's simply what Mr. Guerrero said, that we don't have enough geometric boundary conditions. That's equivalent. Since this, uh, this is, are not enough. Uh, rigid, I'm going to put it with capital because this is, this is a comment that appears quite often. Uh, this is the terminology that uh, the computer people use, rigid body motion. Remains a single solution. Okay, so that means that this this matrix here, even even applying these boundary conditions, is is still singular. Okay, so that is the determinant is zero. Okay, you you take the first subsystem. Okay, so that's uh, up to here. Okay, and you'll see that the, the determinant is zero. I'm not going to do it because it, it's it, it, the determinant of the three by three matrix is something messy. But try try it, uh, for example using Excel. Okay, now let's go on and let's try to uh, to. Um, solve another problem, which it, 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 it has solution, okay? So, uh, let's solve this option. Now, in this case, I'm gonna put a clamped end on the left end, there. And I'm going to put a force here, like this. Okay, let's take a break, and when we continue, we're going to solve this example. Uh, try to go on, try to set up the equations, and uh, what you know, what you do not know, and from that point, we can go on, okay? In the meantime, let's take a break.